Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Churrasco Voltor Pickups. It's been a while and I have lots of great stuff to show you. And there's a reason for this new acquisition of a really nice Spice Orange GameCube controller. Hey Arnold is, or Arnold is making an appearance again because I really like having him around. So without further ado, let's get it started with this episode of Pickups. First up, we have... Uh, regular Sonic for the Sega Genesis, the not-for-resale copy that you can find anywhere, honestly. So, I picked this up mainly because my kids, as you know, love Sonic right now. And I have another way to play Sonic that's not as reliable. So I figured the good old cartridge is always the most reliable way to go. And for what it was basically being given away for, I couldn't really turn this down. You know what Sonic is. Classic 2D platforming at some of its best for Sega. Glad to have a cartridge of this classic on the collection. Next is the last cart. We have Aladdin for the SNES. Now, this is the Mexican Aladdin, which is to say this cartridge was produced in Mexico, not in Japan. And you can always tell because the label is kind of imprinted into the plastic itself as opposed to being a sticker on the back. And the label is a less, a lower quality, uh, not as glossy, the PVC or the... The board here is not as thick as the original, but it works perfectly, and I got it for 10 bucks, and they threw in a free protector. I couldn't really say no to owning this one. It's been on my list for a while now. I'm glad to finally own it. It's a really good 2D uh, uh, action platformer type. It's very difficult as all these Disney Capcom games were, but it's worth a check out. Look into it. Really cool. Really glad to have this. All right, let's move on to, hey, let's go to Xbox. We're doing stuff completely out of order. Starting off with Star Wars KOTOR 2. Me. So, this is one of the few games this uh, month that does not is not complete. It has a registration card. That's about it. I got this for uh, pretty cheap. I really like the first KOTOR. It looks really cool. So, I decided to pick this one up. And this is the cool part of, of this whole thing. Boom! Goes right into Star Wars Jedi Knight Academy. So, um, this game, the guy that sold me KOTOR 2 was really like, hey man, you should really check out uh, Jedi Academy because it's super sweet. And uh, I was like, nah man, I'm not really a big Star Wars guy and it's okay. And this was a little bit of a pricier game, honestly. And I said, no, I'm okay. And then when I finally went to pick up uh, KOTOR 2, he said, hey, do you have this yet? And I was like, no. And he's like, here, just take it. So, like, it's a free game. So yeah, really cool. This is basically another Knights of the Old Republic type of uh, online, well not online game, but you probably could play these online back in the day, I guess, but um, role-playing game where you create your own character in the Star Wars universe and go through being a dark side, light side, whatever you want to do. I really, really like Jedi Knight Academy from the little bit of playtime I had with it, though. This was really neat. I was kind of surprised. While the graphics do not blow me away in this, they're better in this. This is actually the better game. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Slowly amassing like a kind of big collection of Star Wars games on the original Xbox. Pretty neat. Moving on to another Xbox game. Advent Rising. I didn't know much about this game. I looked into it. Think of uh, Mass Effect type vibes is what this game gave me. So, uh, you know, I've been buying lots of games. I told my wife not to worry because now we have a chance to play and win a million dollars in Advent Rising. So that's cool. Money woes forgotten. But really, honestly, guys, this is, uh, if you look into the development of this game, it's quite amazing. It's some guy that had this crazy idea how to make this crazy game. And he was like, yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the best. And he put all this effort into it and it flopped. A terrible failure. But the game is, is okay. Uh, it's worth checking out. Yeah, think Mass Effect and Star Trek Collide. Oh, this is cool. Armed and Dangerous. Armed and Dangerous is an amazing third-party or third-person squad-based shooter with really eclectic loony characters like uh, Imp Thing, Robot Thing, Mole Man Thing, Man thing. And uh, let's just say you need to pick this up. This is uh, extremely cheap. That gun that man is holding sh shoots out sand sharks. They shoot out sharks that burrow into the sand and attack your enemies. How cool is that? Lots of quirky humor in this one. Really solid, tight controls. A really, really nice shooter that nobody talks about for the original Xbox. Boom! 
Blood Wake. High speed gunboat warfare. Straight from Mark Microsoft themselves for the Xbox is Blood Wake. I got this for uh, nothing, basically, and it's an amazing little, uh, think, uh, Twisted Metal meets driving missions, except you're on a boat, and the water reminds me of Wave Race, except nicer. This is a really fun game. It's really mindless. You go around, you do, like, supply drops and pickups, when you shoot up everything with your machine guns and shoot, like, homing rockets out of your boat. A cool little story set in some, like, Samoan islands or something. I don't know. Really cool tropical vibe with lots of murder. Um, if you have an original Xbox and you don't have this, I recommend it. It's This is a fun time, and I kind of want to beat it because the story is num uh, mind-numbingly numb... Uh, ugh, sorry. Mind-numbingly ridiculous. It makes no sense, but hey, it, it's fun. It's fun for what it is. I really like this game. This is my surprise hit for the Xbox, I think. Well, Armed and Dangerous might take the cake, but anyways, moving on to the last Xbox game, and it's a doozy, so let me get this out of here. Alright, here we go. Conquer, live and reloaded. Oh yeah, a heavy hitter indeed. Unfortunately, no manual. And I think this is a reproduction cover because it's so faded and I took it out earlier and it felt very thin. So it is uh, October of 2022. I got this about a month ago now for $10. That's amazing. Uh, you did not miss here, ladies and gents. $10 for Conquer Live and Reloaded on the original Xbox. As many of you know, and some may not know, this is a remake of the N64 Vulgar Squirrel Classic. So basically, Conquer takes us on as a foul mouth, potty mouth caper well, to recover stuff. I don't know. I played it a little bit. It looks amazing. These visuals on the Xbox are at the peak in this game. I need to get the component cables to really make this pop. I'm really excited to get back into this and delve back into Conquer's adventures. I will eventually also want to pick up the N64 version because... It's uncensored, actually. This has some censored bits, which is funny. That the Microsoft would censor and Nintendo would not. But, uh, yeah. This is really cool. I'm excited to have it. Heavy hitter crossed off the list. Alright, that's it for Xbox. Hey, Churrasco, what have you been playing on the PlayStation? I know it's your favorite. Alright. Let's start up with PS1. And we'll start up with a little bit of a cheat. This is Kiss Pinball for the PS1. A uh, lackluster pinball game with, oddly, no Kiss music inside of it, or anywhere to be found. A bit of a cheat because I picked this up originally a, a few months ago when my brother, Gnarly Seabass, came down to visit, and I left it out of the pickups. Can you believe that? So here it is. I played it a little bit. Didn't get too far because I realized that one of my original PlayStation controllers, the a shoulder button is busted, and you, can, you cannot play Flipper successfully with a broken Flipper. It'll be like... And this one's not flipping. Anyways, moving on. Original Tomb Raider for the PS1. This I got because of the nostalgia. I have the remake on the PS2, which is excellent. But this game holds a special place in my heart because as a baby Churrasco, a younger Churrasco, I got this game on the PC and it terrified me. The scary wolves, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, were horrifying. But now I get to stomp around polygonal Peru in the ruins as polygonal Lara while having horrendous controls that have not aged very well. But just for the throwback, the art, everything in it, the opening seat cinematic, it really harkens back to a simpler time. It takes me back to those days. So this is, it's just a fun little piece to have in the collection. That's it for PS1. Let's move on to bigger and better, newer things with PS2. Guys, this is NFL Street 3 with Chad Ocho Stinko on the cover. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This game, in my opinion, is the worst of the NFL Street series on the PS2 or any of that era. I tried to play it. I went through the character creator. And normally on these games, I make I go through the character creator. And then I, I delve further and play the whole career mode out. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it on this one. It not as polished, not as fun. Some new mechanics were introduced that just don't work out. But if you're looking for street football, I guess you, you could do worse. I don't know if you could. Maybe not. Just stick to NFL Street 1. You'll thank me for it. By the way, this is one of the many games I got this uh, last round from OfferUp. I mean, uh, Whatnot. Uh, look into Whatnot if you really want to get some cool games on the cheap. But yeah, it's a online bidding site. Whatever. Just check it out. 
All right, but yeah, not, this is not a great game. Moving on. This is a great game, though. Slide 2, Band of Thieves, the Greatest Hits Edition. This game here, I picked up from someone on OfferUp. And pretty cheap, and it's a continuation of uh, Sly Cooper 1, obviously. And it follows the same uh, cel-shaded raccoon and his zany antics of stealing things, along with his crew of Turtle Man and Hippo Man. I am excited to play this, but first I have to beat part one. Whenever I have time, maybe someday, I will get to it. Oh, this is kind of neat. Another pickup from Whatnot, Fantavision. Fantavision was a launch game for the PS2 that was more of a tech demo than anything to show what Sony's new powerhouse monolith system could do. So basically, there are fireworks that shoot into the sky over cityscapes and you detonate them in an order by making a puzzle and chains and combos to get a higher score. Obviously, you fail, the game ends, boom. Another cool little quirky thing about this, besides the gameplay being kind of fun and you can do simultaneous two-player co-op, which I would love to do one day if someone would just come over to the house and play this game with me, is that in between the rounds and the loading screens, there are these weird intermissions of like 1960s, 1970s style families settling around the tube and having a good old family fun time. So that's kind of neat, kind of creepy, but I, I really like what they're going for here. No one talks about Fanavision that much anymore, but if you get a chance to pick this up, go for it. I, I, you will not be disappointed. If you like quirky puzzles, this is for you guys. Really nice mint copy. All right, let's continue with the PS2. With the last cheat, out of the chute, PBR, Pro Bull Riding. Rider or bull, pick one, press start, and hang on. Why is this a cheat? Well, I also picked this game with my brother. I picked this one up with my brother about three months ago, and I forgot to put it in the pickups. This is uh, stupid. This game is stupid. You, uh, <laughs> But in the best way. You got to be the cowboy here and ride a bull. That's about it. Gameplay lasts a few seconds. And you go through a career mode, I believe, too. There's pro bull riders to pick from, and you can also be the bull. How cool is that? And I believe player one can be the cowboy, player two can be the bull. It's madness. Buck your body, your, your little, your friend that's playing on player one off of you or player two, and then go around and chase the rodeo clowns. It's amazing. I saw this somewhere on some videos at some point. Or I saw it laying on a shelf, and I was like, that can't be a pro bull riding freaking game. But sure enough, there was. And and this, for the silliness, and for the basically I'm going to give it away price, I, I couldn't say no. Yeah, this is mindless. This is a silly little talking piece. This is fun. And the last PS2 game, Total Overdose, A Gunslinger's Tale in Mexico. Um, there was a bonus DVD apparently included at some point. That had a first look at Lara Croft Tomb Raider Legend. I don't have that, unfortunately. But whatever, I don't care because I own that game already on the PS2. So I'm not really losing out on anything. This game is really cool. Uh, I got this on Whatnot, again, for next to nothing. And the original case had a chunk missing out of here. Like someone broke it off in their b-hole. So I replaced it with a copy of, I believe, Bridesmaids DVD case. And um, yeah, it looks really nice. But besides that, this is essentially Grand Theft Auto meets Max Payne. You zoom around as this uh, charismatic young fellow and shoot some cartel members with double barrel shotgun sawed off at both hands, one in each hand. Really cool, you ro go loot, do like trick shots, you're jumping, off, you're jumping off walls. As you vault in midair and spin around, you line up headshots in slow-mo. Quirky humor, the graphics are a little ugly, even by PS2 standards, like it doesn't really look as good as GTA. But if you like GTA, if you like some Max Payne, and you're looking for more, more of that type of action to scratch that itch, this is the game. Check it out. I am super excited to own this. It's been on my wanted list for a bit. And here it is. That's it for PS2. Hey guys, let's go on to the one of two PS3 games this month. Rayman Origins. Uh, what not? Strikes again. Got this for free, basically. Uh, so, what this game is, as many of you know, Rayman is a very popular 2D platformer with 3D elements, with beautiful hand-drawn visuals, it looks like. 
and I picked up a copy of the original Rayman on PS1, and it was scratched to pieces, and I guess I wouldn't play, so I had to return it. So I was left with this urge of wanting to try Rayman. So, boom, there it was. Rayman Origins is fantastic, if not also a little bit, and by a little bit, I mean very challenging. It's a super challenging platformer with a collectathon type of uh, ambiance and element to it that is really fun and addictive to play through. I played through multiple levels and had a lot of fun. I played this actually kind of extensively. I want to go back to it, but the other PS3 game that I got this month is totally stealing its thunder. We're going to get there soon. I'm going to hold off on that. But first, let's go to PS4. All right, PS4 has two games this month. First one is Scott Pilgrim The World, I mean, versus The World, The Game Complete Edition. This is a limited run game that my dad got for me in the lands of Miami. Really cool, it has some extras here, like the um, the ticket to see the show of Clash at Demon Head, uh, full color manual, really neat stuff. I, and um, I've been wanting this for a while. Uh, I love brawlers. I know my brother likes them more, but this is still kind of a genre that's almost forgotten the time. And we got to show people out there, buy the product. We want more of this. This is a really cool 8-bit style brawler based on the character from the popular film Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which honestly, um, it's not my favorite flick. It's, it's fun. It's mindless fun. But the game, I think, is far supersedes it in being a, a source of entertainment for me. This is really cool. I already beat it, so uh, it's amazing. Um, it was really, really ball-bustingly hard until I discovered that you could upgrade your characters via eating food at food stands, permanently upgrade them. So this is really cool, but really challenging. Uh, once again, I heard that the online play is kind of broken. It doesn't work with servers, but couch co-op is where it's at. Someone come over. Come play with me. Really, let's go. Let's go. Come on, sit on the couch. Come play this game with me. Let's have some fun. All right, and the last PS4 game I've been waiting for for eight months from Limited Run. Ender Lilies. Look this game up. This is Metroidvania. It's in the system right now in the PS4. Metroidvania at some of its finest. Some hand-drawn watercolor-ish elements to this. It makes it for a really cool game. You play as this chick, a priestess, who summons other beings to fight for her. And each one has a different ability. Think kind of like Bloodstained. And you get the right idea. But yeah, check this out. This is amazing. I'm gonna, looking forward. I'm playing this currently on the PS4. It's going to be the only game I play on PS4 until I beat it. Let's move on to PS5, shall we, gents? With Astria Ascending. If you like old school turn-based, it's in my PS5 right now. Because I need to beat this before I continue any other PS5 game. If you like old school games, I'm like 25 hours in. This is the game for you. With your party on one side, the enemies on the other side, turn-based combat at its finest, except there's no ATB gauges or way to know whose turn is next, which is kind of bullshit, but whatever. The game is still awesome. Hand-drawn art with some puzzled Metroidvania elements. Metroidvania is kind of, sort of, but not really, meets old-school RPGs. This is excellent. The next two were also gifts for my dad. Thank you, Dad. Ninja Turtles Kawabunga Collection for the PS5. I was skeptical about how much... Could we really get out of the PS5 on such old games or out of these old games on the PS5? But damn, is this fun. A trip down memory lane. Once again, I'm waiting for some couch co-op, even though I heard the servers on this were exceptional. So I'm going back into this one. I already beat a couple of the arcade games on this and had a blast. I can't sing enough prices to this collection. If you're on the fence, I suggest you jump on it. Also on the PS4, so get it on that too. All right, last PS5 game. Destroy All Humans 2. Reprobed. I... Uh, have the original Destroy All Humans on the PS2. I am aware that there's a remake of that one too on the PS5, but I went with this and uh, damn, I haven't played it yet, but I've seen previews. It looks amazing. I can't wait to delve into this. Guys, tell me more about it. That's all I'm going to say because I don't know anything about it, so I'll be just talking about a b-hole. But yeah, check this out. This looks awesome. The graphics look amazing. All right, let's move on to the Wii. Let's stream through these a little quick because my phone will explode. The Destiny of Zorro! I got this because as a child, I used to watch the Zorro TV show, and I really liked it. This game is awful. There's lots of waggle, nunchuck and Wiimote included in the waggle department, and uh, it gets a little too gimmicky. The graphics look very PS1-ish, actually, and it's not a fun time. I played through a couple of missions, and I did, was not blown away at all. 
um, I'm going to say right now, let's nominate the stinker right now. It easily goes to Destiny of Zoro. It disappointed me. I, a game could be so much more. But I guess the Wii is known for lots of shovelware, and here is a prime example of it. So yeah, Destiny of Zoro is the stinker of the month. All right, next is Worms, a space oddity. So, uh, my brother really loves Worms, and so I decided to pick this up. I don't know much about this game. I played it for a little bit and got destroyed. Guys, if you know about the Worms games on the Wii, let me know. Did I pick up the good one or the crappy one? I'm not sure. But this looks cool. Graphics are nice. The gameplay is typical worm stuff. I heard this was more limited in options as what you could do, but uh, I have it. So, no regrets. Right. Another Wii game. Super Paper Mario. This one kind of disappointed me. Because while I picked it up for next to nothing, what happened here was that I thought this was going to be an RPG like the other Paper Mario games. Little did I know, it's a 2D platformer with uh, 3D views that can be switched out. I love the graphics, the paper aesthetic is excellent. I really like the controls, they're smooth. And I really like the story, I like the characters, I like the bad guys. This seems like it's going to be a really fun game. I will delve back into it for sure, but damn, was I really wanting an RPG in the Paper Mario series. Ah, and the others are just so dang expensive. Hmm. Well, maybe, uh... At some point, I might brave, or my wallet might brave that plunge. Alright. Next Wii game, Sonic Colors. Once again, my kids love Sonic. I heard this is an amazing Sonic game. I played it for a bit. It sure is amazing. In comparison to the other Sonic games, it's really good. Um, I will definitely give this a try, and the kids will enjoy it. But if you're looking for a good Sonic game, since the original Sonic's on Sega Genesis, I would say give this a shot. Not much to say. And the last uh, Wii game is a heavy hitter, Mario Kart Wii. They mislabeled it at the store, and I got it for uh, really cheap, so lucky me again, I guess. Uh, this game is essentially you're just regular Mario Kart. You've seen it a million times. but And I've never been into Mario Kart, but I really kind of enjoyed this. This was fun. Um, I'm going to get maybe the Wii wheel later to, you know, drive around. Or maybe I'll look like a tool. Let me know. Is that cool or is it not cool? Let me know. Let me know. I don't want to look not cool. So yeah, this is a neat little game. Uh, once again, I really want to play with someone local couch co-op. I think it'll be a lot more fun then. But for that, I guess I need two Wiimotes or two ways to input controls into that machine. Um, let's move on to the reason why we got this beautiful Spice Orange controller is definitely because of Charlie's Angels on the GameCube. Oh God, this game. And it, this, this copy is suffering from the uh, crackly art. This game is horrendous. Everything you've heard about this game saying it's horrible is true. I am sorry, uh, Zoro is definitely not the stinker. This is the stinker, without prejudice. This is a filthy pig that you should not waste any time on. This is a horrendous game. Uh, it's just so awful, there's no describing it. Third person brawler with 3D elements that are poorly executed and horrendous sound effects, horrendous graphics, horrendous control. Everything is just so bad about this game. And it's all Drew Barrymore's fault, probably, for some reason. Or Cameron Diaz, or Louis, Lucy Luz. They're, they're just, it's this terrible game. Okay, just kidding. That's not why we picked up that GameCube controller, but that is the stinker for sure. Star Fox Adventures. This was my big pickup this month. Ah, uh, this game is cool. I remember, and it's mint. I remember when my brother had this on the GameCube. Uh, this was one of the games on GameCube that I looked like, wow, that looks really freaking good. I kind of want to check it out more. Now, while Star Fox, or Fox McCloud, gets out of his uh, ship for this one and strolls around dinosaurs, which is kind of weird for a Star Fox game, I played it for a bit, and uh, spoilers, guys, I don't have a GameCube memory card, which kind of limits how much fun I can have with these games right now, but I'll get one eventually. Uh, this game is amazing. It looks beautiful. The control's really nice. I, I am excited to go back into it and check out the remaining adventure with Fox McCloud and Crystal and all these other assorted furries and creepers. So, yeah. Last two games. Uh, Resident Evil Zero, just in time for Halloween. This is awesome. So I am notoriously scared of scary games, and this one kind of terrifies me. And I played it very little because I was kind of scared, but I made it through some zombie blasting, and it was a lot of fun. And damn, do these graphics hold up. The pre-rendered environments are amazing. Now, I will keep playing this one, 
I want to get into the Resident Evil series, so I figured what better place to start than with the, the prequel. Uh, I own the remake on the PS4, downloaded digitally, which I will get a physical copy at some point. But this is a great game. I'm having a lot of fun. I can't wait to get my memory card to really make some headway. But uh, I'm playing a slightly less horrendous Resident Evil game. And that's Revelations. And this is the reason why Rayman got booted out of the PS3. You can see this is still in there right now. This is the, I think, I need a new case for this. The hit of the month, the gem, well, shall I say. Wow, this game is great. This gives me Dead Space vibes slash cold fear. Dead Space on a ship in the middle of the ocean. Really spooky, really creepy. And for me personally, I like the creepy blobby enemies more than zombies because they don't scare me as much. They're friendlier. I could hug them, maybe high five them, and they wouldn't be as scary as the zombies. And the graphics are really nice. I know it's a port of a 3DS game or something like that, which is amazing. And it's, it's obviously looking better on the PS3. I know there's a PS4 version too, but I gave the PS3 some love here. This game is really awesome. Guys, I highly recommend this. If you're wanting to get into Resident Evil or if you know of Resident Evil and haven't tried this one, try this game. This is a lot of fun. Or maybe I'm wrong because maybe I'm not big into Resident Evil and I'm freaking, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyways, uh, fantastic. Inventory management. I have a buddy most of the time playing on there, an NPC that follows you around so you don't feel all alone and scared, terrified. That, that's a bonus for me. Um, yeah, but really cool game with uh, the ammo management and all that, conserving your ammo and health items. The, the survival horror element is definitely there. So yeah, guys, that's it for pickups this month. Uh, picked up some cool games. There's the stinker again. Picked up some cool games, some not so cool games, some really cool stuff. Uh, lots of recommendations. I hope that you guys got something out of this. There's too many games to even stack on here right now. There's just so much stuff laying around. But yeah, I hope uh, I inspired you guys to maybe pick something up. Um... Oh, watch out, Arnold. Ugh, crushed by Ender Lilies. But yeah, anyways, guys, if there's anything on here you want to know about, more about, leave me a comment. Uh, subscribe if you like the video, if you like the pickups. I'm also going to leave a link, a whatnot invite for you guys. It's not a money grab, uh, kind of, sort of. I want to pick up, buy more games, so you could be helping me and you could help yourself. Get the link, it gives you 10 bucks, and uh, you buy stuff on it. I get 10 bucks as soon as you make your first purchase. Whatever. You can uh, take the link or not. You can tell me to screw off. Whatever. I don't care. Anyways, uh, this is the way the gaming community helps each other. Let's uh, put money in each other's pockets to buy more games. But I hope you enjoy these pickups. Um, they were really fun. I'm really enjoying myself. I kind of went overboard, so they will be probably a hiatus of games for a bit. And um, until next time, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. I really appreciate the views. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch me babble about old CDs and old cartridges and pieces of plastic that nobody else really cares about but us. Thank you guys for watching. This is Chirasco Voltorb, signing out.